In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Mass today for the 24th Sunday in the Church's Ordinary Time. The Mass today being offered for the people of the parish. Today's Gospel leads us into the region of Caesarea Philippi, where we're invited to share St. Peter's confession of faith in Jesus as the Messiah. Like St. Peter, however, we need to be reminded that Jesus is destined to suffer and that we ourselves must take up our cross daily if we wish to be his disciples. Let's pause to prepare. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have mercy. sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> First reading from Isaiah. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be ashamed. My vindicator is here at hand. Does anyone start proceeding against me? Then let us go to court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who will dare to condemn me? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading from James. Take the case, my brothers, of someone who has never done a single good act, but claims that he has faith. Will that faith save him? If one of the brothers or one of the sisters is in need of clothes and he has not enough food to live on, and one of you says to them, I wish you well. Keep yourself warm and eat plenty. Without giving them these bare necessities of life, then what good is that? 
faith is like that. If good works, do not go with it. It is quite dead. This is the way to talk to people of that kind. You say you have faith and I have good deeds. I will prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left for the villages round Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he put this question to his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. They said, others say Elijah, others again, one of the prophets. But you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up and said to him, you are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death, and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter, and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. He called the people and his disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> We've reached chapter 8 in the Gospel of Mark in our Sunday readings. And it is, in fact, the, the midpoint of the Gospel, of which there are 16 chapters, and we're now right in the, in the midpoint. And it is a a turning point, too, for the story because this profession of faith by Peter in in our Lord is is a really change in dynamic now and there's going to be a a change in gear as we go through the rest of the Gospel. It's um, It's not the end of the story because clearly Peter hasn't quite got it right yet and is reprimanded quite heavily by Jesus. But in some ways, the, the, the gospel, although it's obviously, it's about Jesus. That's, he's the central character. But there's also a secondary uh, story going on, which is about the disciples. And it's about their progress from being fishermen or the other categories they fell into, how they turned from that into being true disciples of the Lord. I wanted just to think about for a moment those, that kind of faltering path that the the disciples make along that way. There's a story told about Martin Luther King, the famous civil rights activist. A couple of people are having a conversation about him and one says to the other, I really like Dr. King. He's a, he's a wonderful man. <clears throat> I really do admire the way he goes about his, his vocation and the work he does. The other one says, yeah, that, I, I agree with you. <clears throat> why, don't, um, why don't you go on one of his marches that 
are taking place. And the first one says, well, no, that's not what I want to do. I admire him, but I'm not a follower. I admire him, but I'm not a follower. Now that, that transition from being someone who's kind of entranced by this figure and yet is unable to, to go into the next phase, that's something that is occurring for the disciples. They've been drawn in, fascinated by this, this preacher and healer. Now are they ready to follow him? And it turns out not to be such an easy thing to do. When I was a child, one of the um, favorite uh, songs, and I, I, I think I learned it off by heart, was The Ugly Duckling by Danny Kaye. And it's based on, you, you may know this, the Hans Christian Andersen story about a duckling who's uh, not very good and feels very gauche and, and uncertain, but turns out to be a beautiful swan. And that's a, it's a kind of standard story of, of maturity revealing something that's been there but not acknowledged. And I know I've known people, and perhaps you have as well, who suddenly you, you realize what they, they've become. And it might be a teenager who's really, really difficult to handle, and they mature into an adult who's got real poise, real character about them, and you, and you wonder at that change that has taken place. Not all change, though, is necessarily for the good. A very dramatic example of that is in one of my favorite films, The Godfather, where Michael Corleone, who starts off the film as a very upright, decent young man, doesn't want anything to do with his father's business, but is gradually sucked in and eventually becomes worse, more ruthless than his father. And then by the end of the film, he's really, he's a monster. It says what has happened to him. How do we ensure that change, transition, is good and healthy rather than something that can be, can be cruel and, and, and evil? The orthodox Christian response to this is the person of Jesus. That's the measure of any change that's for the good. And in any situation, any circumstance, any moment of going one way or another, what is the criterion is, what would Jesus do? Simple question. Ask yourself that whenever you're faced with a dilemma. What would the Lord do? That's the, the criterion for any change. The disciples have to negotiate that. They've got to work through, sometimes in a very difficult way, to find how they can be in the path of Jesus. The question comes back to us as well. Do I want to be an admirer of Jesus or do I want to follow? Let's proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us raise our hopes and our concerns to the Father of love, through Christ our Saviour and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Each prayer ends in your loving kindness, Lord, and our response is hear and grant our prayer. Let us pray for the Church that as it makes its public profession of faith in Jesus Christ, it may also be at the forefront of bringing assistance to those who are most in need throughout the world. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear and grant our prayer. Let us pray for yourselves that we may strive to go the extra mile in all we do for those who feel cast out by society and beyond, beyond human care. In your loving kindness, Lord. Hear and grant our prayer. Let us pray for our young people, beginning at the new academic year in school, college, or university, and for those starting employment for the first time, that they may be encouraged to reach their full potential and may grow in confidence and self-respect. In your loving kindness, Lord. Hear and grant our prayer. Let us pray for those who would like to believe, but find obstacles in their way. For those who are searching for meaning in their lives, and for those who see only a bleak future. In your loving kindness, Lord. Hear and grant our prayer. We pray for this week's Mass intentions. For the people of the parish in thanksgiving, for Patricia Isioma Olusanya. We pray for all who have died. Terry Milligan, Daniel Stephen Brudney, Charles Agayam, and Alfred Paul Ediri Manasinghe. May the souls through the mercy of God rest in peace. In your loving kindness, Lord. Hear and grant our prayer. We join our prayers with those of Our Lady. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, sins, now and at our far death. Amen. In silence and trust, we open our hearts to God. Father of all love and mercy, accept the prayers that we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite. 
Old Horsham Road from Newcastle, Clancy and Madison. Let's pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. For the people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, <clears throat> he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, <clears throat> his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Edward, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Through Jesus we've learnt to call God our Father, so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are you, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being at Mass with us here today. The Bank Collection continues on Sunday from 8 to 6 p.m. The items requested are tin fruits, tin tomatoes, sardines, mackerel, cereals in a medium-sized box. And the Sunday School lessons, they start um, this Sunday, the 12th of September, except for the confirmation course, which will start on the 26th of September. Do take care and enjoy the week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be, be to God. God.